YouTube. It's Brian Phillips. We've got a box. We're gonna open it right now. It's gonna be amazing. I can't wait. All right. So here goes nothing. Ooh, we have some sort of a packing list. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, that looks pretty straightforward stuff. And then what's what's inside this box? What is it? Oh yes, the Fusion 360 Smart. Amazing. If I could get it out of the box, it'd be more amazing. Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful. So what is this helicopter? It is a 360 size smart fusion. I know, it sounds amazing. I wonder if this one's easier or harder than the M4. I guess we'll find out. They say it's a skill level three, that's kind of scary. Intermediate collective pitch helicopter. <laughs> Intermediate. When they use that word, it makes me cringe for fear of my life. So we're gonna go ahead and try this right now. 350 millimeters on the blade, 685 millimeters total length. Let's go ahead and pop this thing out. Okay, got the little register thing, got the blade manual. Of course, we're gonna look through that shortly. And then let's pop open the cover. Oh yeah. There it is, guys. Look at that beauty. Oh yes, it's so beautiful with that receiver already in there. Oh yes. Bind fly, I miss you so much. Looks like it comes with an IC3 connector. It's got a brushless 3400 KV BH5051. Uh, motor and it looks like for the receiver it's a satellite receiver 40 oh gosh i can't read that can you read that 4651 t there we go and then it's got the spectrum fc 6250 hx which is the same one we did in the m4 just the other day so we're going to go ahead and pull this out the difference is we don't have to set that up hopefully because it will already be done for us oh yes that is gorgeous really clean delicious design here and then of course we have a servo yes we do we have a tail servo as opposed to a motor which is always preferable on anything that could be 3d and as you can see this thing is lubed up and ready to rock and roll so that's pretty exciting belt driven tail Everything looks absolutely well done. And so we're gonna get ready to build it right now. Obviously the radio setup on a heli is a little bit different than the radio setup on a plane. And since this one's already built, we should hopefully just have to do the radio setup and then ready to rock and roll. Oh yeah, that is nice. Fusion 360 in red, white, and blue, Merca. Okay, so it looks like we've got four mounting posts and then so weird oh, oh no shoot looks like that label ripped right off of there so strange and we do have a smart esc and that's right there as you can see pretty cool carbon fiber construction the antennas do stick past the carbon fiber i'm gonna go ahead and just nudge that one out just a little bit further and this tube i believe is aluminum so absolutely gorgeous design but also very modest size. So this is gonna be real similar to the 330S in size and performance, uh, should be a little bit higher. So let's go ahead and uh, there is a bag of goodies that comes with it, some zip ties, some mounting foam and different things and a screwdriver in case you would need that. But in our case, I don't think we're gonna need that. I do really like the fact that it's fully assembled and in the box as such. That means that you can fully disassemble it or you don't have to fully disassemble it to put it back in the storage compartment, which is kind of nice. And you could bring it to the flying field in that way. So we'll just put this behind us. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a second and grab the transmitter and get right back to you. All right, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go ahead and take off the rotors, uh, the main rotor blades. And as you can see, one of the nuts just fell. So that was obviously not by plan. So this is a 2.5 millimeter drive. And I just have to get the nut that dropped down on top of the motor. Okay, and just take note of which direction's up and which way's down. It will come in handy. Okay, 
not necessarily worried about left and right. I'm sure things will be fine if we take them off and put them back on. So we'll just lay these aside, make sure that the hardware is easy to find. Where did my nut go? That's always nice. Did it fall in there? Yeah, it fell right on top of the motor. Oh, oh there it is. It was stuck on the ferrite core of the ESC. So we'll go ahead and lay these in the direction that they were. Okay, with the blade symbol up. Okay? okay. So now that's gonna give us a little bit measure of security and safety. And so what we're concerned with now is getting the radio set up done predominantly. So we don't actually need the front end to go on there yet. We'll just kind of lay this aside as well. And what we're gonna use is we're gonna use the NX10. This is kind of my preferred choice lately. It's been working out really good. The NX8 was fine, but we just eventually ran out of channels. And so when you get into the more sophisticated helicopters, it is nice to have the additional channels as well. We're gonna actually be running this on 3S2200. This is a 30C pack. We're gonna use this for setup. And then we're gonna use 50C as recommended by the manual for the flight. And then we'll probably see how it does with 30C packs because presumably there shouldn't really be a huge difference between 30 and 50C on smart packs in my experience. In fact, I've had better experience with some of the 30C packs, but as the manual calls out, it calls out the 2200 3S 50C, which is sort of an unusual size for an airplane guy, okay? So then we're gonna flip to these pages and we're gonna set up the settings that we need to set. Okay, so it's on page five. And then we're gonna do these things, okay? Should take a little bit longer than an airplane, but it should still be relatively easy as compared to a plug and fly, like what we had with uh, the M4 that we did here recently. That was a considerably more complicated setup. All right, so first things first, we're gonna put the battery in and you're probably thinking to yourself, well, do you need something to keep that from slipping? The answer is Velcro would be a smart idea, but what I found is that I really like shelf liner. I feel like it works just as good, if not better in certain applications. And I know some of you heli guys are cringing right now, thinking to yourself, you're gonna really use shelf liner on a helicopter? Yes, I am. And here's why, because it's never done me wrong yet. And once it does me wrong, then I will change my thinking. But for now, we're just gonna go with it because it's worked really well in the past and I have no reason to do it otherwise. So I'm just cutting this really simple. I'm not even gonna glue it at all. I'm just gonna stick it on there and see what type of stick we get. That's probably good enough. And if it's not quite enough, I might just do a little teeny tiny bit of China glue and that'll just keep it in place for us you could use double-sided tape and you could just use pressure and heat. Why don't we just do a little bit of China glue, foam to foam in this case. If you guys don't have China glue or foam to foam, you can get some foam to foam when you order something like this from Horizon uh, because of course this would be a Horizon Hobby product. And it uh, feels like that's just metal. So if you ever decide to go to a Velcro later, you can always change it back. So of course they're gonna recommend you use Velcro you can use Velcro on both sides and that's also fine. So you see just a couple of short little bits of drip and then usually you can just spread that, give yourself just a little bit of backing. And I like to spread that real thin so it becomes basically like an envelope. And we're just gonna let that tack up to the point where it's dry-ish, okay? Really simple, and that's just gonna make it so it's easy to not have it always constantly giving us trouble and want to slip off, but not so much goop that every time you take your battery out, you've got residue on the back of it, okay? So in this case, we'll just drop this right down in there because it, it was so thin, I don't think we're gonna need much, okay? And so now that it's stuck, you don't have to worry about that falling out every time you go in to load your battery, okay? So that's, again, foam to foam. You can also get China glue from the other choices, but I like foam to foam. It's probably my premium choice compared to the China glue. And then of course, you wouldn't want to use CA on something like that because of course it'll eat the foam. So this is made of like a foam style product. OK, 
Okay, so we put this on. Okay, so we're gonna get this thing strapped down. I'm not sure why the strap is quite so long on this because uh, this is not gonna really ever be bigger than that. That's kind of huge actually, because look, now we're almost all the way, like way extra. Way past, yeah. So I don't know if we can maybe shorten it. Yeah, we can shorten that a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out. You guys will have to do this too, so you might as well watch me do it. This needs to pull through. What is it, holding on to the ESC too? It looks like, it looks like it goes all the way around the ESC. Mm. That's what's going on. Okay. Well, it is one of the high quality straps, actual fabric. <clears throat> I can't imagine anybody using, you know, like some sort of a combination of batteries on a 3S configuration like that. I just wish there was better purchase on that. It's way too long. Okay, well, not insurmountable odds there to get that fixed. Should be relatively easy setup, let's find out. Okay, so we're gonna turn on our transmitter. I'm gonna hit back and cancel. We're gonna go to add new, bond, add new model. Now at this point, instead of making an acro, we're gonna click and scroll to heli and we're gonna create. Now it's gonna take a second because I have like 165 models in here or somewhere in there. And if I go back to this page five, it's gonna show the transmitter setup. Okay, so as you can see, it just came up and that model type is the first thing we set up, okay? So then we just work our way through the settings. Turn, I think you can turn the page, so that's for DX8. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, that says DX8, my apologies. Good catch. So then over here, this would include the NX, NX10, okay? So if you guys see what she was talking about, this one's for the DX7S and DX8. And then over here, this is for our model. So my apologies there, good catch. Okay, so the model type is Heli. Um, and then normally we go in here and we type in a name, so it's not just gonna be Heli. This of course is gonna be the Fusion 360 Smart. So we'll get that typed in and come right back. All right, so we got the Fusion 360 Smart Heli because I got so many characters, I kinda had to screw up the spacing, but whatever. Uh, swash type. That's like right here, it says swash type normal. Of course, that's gonna be set to normal by default. And uh, let's see if there's any pictures in here. Oh, look at that, that fancy. Looks like, uh, yeah, it's closer to this than the others, so that was already the right one. Uh, flight mode setup, they want it set to switch B. Switch two is inhibit and then hold switch will be H. Okay, so we'll turn that on, very good. That all looks correct to me. And it looks like switch, they show dark on the one and that's the way we have ours. So when we pull that switch toward us, it locks out the modes. No matter what position we're in, it's gonna be in hold. When that switch is off, then it goes to normal one or two, okay? All right, cool, so that's set. So we wanna do channel assign. Let's see what we got here by default. Looks like channel one is throttle, then aileron, elevator, rudder, gear is gonna be flight mode instead of D. <clears throat> yep, there it is, F mode. And uh, looks like auxiliary two, wait. Auxiliary one is not sure that we can change it. Auxiliary two is asterisk. Function is not available on all transmitters. Okay. I don't really know. There, oh, it doesn't say anything, so I don't need to worry about it. Right. So that's fine. Sorry guys, got a little distracted there. Then it looks like we might need to jump back out for the rest. Uh, all right, so we'll jump back out. The hold position warning is, is wrong as usual. I don't understand why that's not been fixed, but I'm gonna go back to warnings, audio events. Uh, is it under audio events? Telemetry warnings. Uh, settings, nope, no. 
stepping report. Switch changes, no. Audio events, generic. System sounds, no. Where is that? Flight modes, no. Okay, so just in going into system setup, so watch this. Now when I hit back, see hold position? That should be warning us if it's in that position, not if it's in that position. So we have to figure out what we're, what we're trying to resolve here. And there is definitely audio events. Maybe it's under here. Switch changes. Okay, we'll find it and come back and tell you where it is. All right, so I believe I found it. Audio events. Oops. Model start, hold zero, okay? Or in stunt one or stunt two, okay? So what's gonna happen is, if we have, let's go into system setup, tester warning. Okay, when we come back out, I need the throttle hold on. No warning, okay? Now let's go back in and let's go ahead and put our throttle hold off. We got a warning and it's gonna prevent us from exiting until we set the switch to the correct condition. Also, and that's very important guys, that's like chop your fingers and hands off sort of thing, okay? So now I wanna be sure to shut off that warning and then I wanna go into normal. It should also warn for that, but it's probably gonna warn this first. Yep, so it's got both positions or see, that satisfied the one position. See, now if I put that there, that would have started up right away, okay? So we're still depending on throttle hold like normal, okay? If you guys didn't understand what just happened there, all I'm trying to worry about is upon power up or model start, it's gonna give me a warning if I don't have my alarm or if I don't have my throttle hold on, okay? This is my throttle hold. It is currently off. It's currently allowed to be spinning, okay? So if I were to turn on my transmitter, it's gonna warn me before it connects RF. See the warning? You hear it vibrating? And she's talking too. Now that the, now that the uh, throttle hold is on, it will protect me and so it will connect, okay? All right, so continuing through the setup, that's one of the most important setups on a heli, period. All right, um, so now we need to do dual rates and expo, gyro, and mixing for the panic switch, panic recovery, and they have the throttle and pitch curves, and then they have timers. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we'll go ahead and set up dual rates and expo. Now this is, this is not the normal Brian Phillips RC setup. This is gonna be the setup from the book on page six in my case of the manual for the Fusion 360. So under ailerons, I wanna set it to the switch of my choice, not, I'm setting it to switch F. They also recommend switch F. Okay, so it looks like 100, 100, then 85, eight, uh, 85, 85, what? Dual rates is 85, 85. Do they mean 15 and 85? No, your expo is zero. Oh, why is it 85? Oh, up and down, up and down, gotcha. Okay, so they want it like 85, 85, okay? Then, <clears throat> this is 100%, then 85, then 85, okay? Then we're gonna go over to elevator, we're gonna set that to switch F. And we're gonna set that to 100, and then we're gonna do 85 and 85. Again, I'm not a big fan of lowering my rates, but on a heli, I can agree with that for once, okay? All right, and then we're gonna go into rudder. Of course, in helicopter world, this would be the same three, whoops. It's the same three control axis as in an airplane. And we're just setting the rates to 85. Okay, so you have 100, 85, and 85. Okay, so that matches what the chart is here. So then we can walk out and we can set 
throttle cut is already, this is already taken care of as part of the throttle hold in the helicopter setup, okay? So you don't need to set throttle cut, it might confuse you, okay? Throttle curve, we do have settings there, so we'll set that. So in normal, they're suggesting zero, then 65, 65, so under normal, See how that light, that little black thing comes up? That's the switch condition, meaning we're in hold. Now it jumps over to normal, meaning we're out of the mode. So we would be actually moving the blades now if the stick was up, okay? So we're gonna scroll down here and we're gonna set zero, then we're gonna go to 65. It's got the chargers chiming on me. 65, we'll go to 65 as instructed by the manual. And then 65, or 65, yeah, they want 65 through the duration. Okay, and what that's gonna do is that's gonna set the motor to spin at 65 as soon as you're taking off, okay? Once you're taking off, then it's gonna be taking off, okay? Now, let's go over to normal mode, or uh, excuse me, stunt one. Stunt one is gonna be, according to their diagram, 80 across the board. Okay. And remember, this is the throttle curve. We'll set the pitch curve in a little bit. Eighty-five, or excuse me, that's eighty is what they recommend. My bad, guys. Okay, so then in stunt mode two, you're gonna wanna set that to 100. Jeez, really? That's a lot. Okay, 100. 100. 100. Okay, so if you're in stunt mode two, you're gonna have 100% throttle at all positions, the speed of the motor is gonna be 100%. Stunt one. Then stunt one. Okay, so then in stunt one, it's gonna be 80. Stunt one. And then in normal, it's gonna be zero, and then increasing to 65, 65, 65, 65. Okay? And then if you have hold on, at any point, it's gonna be nothing. So in hold is zero, 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 zero for throttle, okay? That's very important because then that would just, you know, auto gyro down. The pitch curve is where you want to be careful. You don't want a ton of negative in the hold mode, okay? Which they're probably going to show in the pitch curve. So in normal, they want you to set it to 0, 25. I think I'm going to bring this up because I don't want a lot of negative at all. So I'm gonna set it to like 40, 35, 40, 50, what are they, 25, 37, 50, 75. Okay, so that just means I'm gonna have very little negative pitch when the stick is down, okay, in normal. Right. Although I'm just thinking out loud for a second. If I want to bring the helicopter down in normal, I will be slowing the throttle down as well when I'm below the 50% stick position. So that means I'm going to be reducing the overall power that's being applied by the motor. But I'm also going to want to be able to bring the helicopter down. So why don't we just because the manual says 25, we'll just do it their way first and we'll see if there's any issues. I'm only a different, I'm only off by a few basis points anyway. So see, it's still got that same curve that I was thinking about. Um, okay, so we'll do that. And then in number one, so I have to flip the switch to one. They want 25, 50, 75, 100. Okay, so that's normal. And then in hold, they kind of want the same thing. They want it to be 25, Oh, maybe that's what I did wrong. They want 25 for 0%, 50 for 
37, then 50, then 75, okay? So now let's look at normal, yep. So you see there is no zero pitch unless you go to stunt one or stunt two. In stunt one, in normal, see, did I set number one that way? I think I actually set. That's what the default is. Oh, okay, so number one, we need to change this back. On number one, we want this, sorry guys. On number one, we want this to be zero, then 25. So it'll be a linear output, okay? And then on this mode, I don't really care about Expo because it's a straight line anyway. So 25, 37, 50, 75. So we have 25, 37, 50, 75, 100. And then in this one, you got zero, 25 through, okay, so just linear. And then in stunt mode two, you've got the same, okay? And then at any time, if you go to hold, then it's gonna go over and it's gonna look like this. Aha, it changed the settings. See, it didn't save it. So they want 25 and then 37, right? Mm -hmm. That's so weird. See? So basically normal and hold are gonna be the same mm -hmm. for the pitch curve, yep. but not necessarily the same for the throttle curve, of course. Throttle curve is going to be nothing. Once this is off, it's gonna be allowed to spin up, but only with giving stick input, okay? All right, so that's what we just set up. Now that's just a starting point. You might find that you wanna make some adjustments there and fiddle with it a little bit. That's fine, that's perfectly normal uh, to wanna do that. I am gonna go with what the book says for now, just because I'm still a real, relatively inexperienced heli pilot, so I don't have any room to speak about changing these. Um, okay, so now gyro settings. So gyro, we're gonna set that switch to aux two. Not so much to the switch, but to That's a switch is flight mode. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you for catching that. I I saw channel aux two. Switch flight mode. There we go. There we go. Channel is going to be aux 2. There we go, folks. My apologies, folks. Uh, thank you for catching that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so normal, 75 through the range. So this is just kind of like a percentage of gyro, and you can see it's changing the gain now. So the gain is just a proportional change to what actually uh, that particular channel calls out, okay? So at some point when we call out this rate mix, it's gonna make the gyro really high um, when we have an emergency um, correction. Okay, so we'll set that to 75. And you can see the arrow just speaks to where we actually have the mode currently called out. So depending on our switch conditions. Okay, and then the hold percentage would be, hmm, 75 still, okay? And so you might find that like when you have a uh, throttle hold on, you want less gyro or more gyro because you might want to auto gyro the helicopter. If you ever accidentally put it into throttle hold or you've got like a dead stick landing and you want that to be your fail safe, then you can actually set your gyro higher, which is going to tend to auto correct it even quicker and with more vibrance. It's gonna resist environmental impact given you may be in a dead stick condition. So anyway, just, just thought. Some people do that, I don't necessarily do that. I'm just gonna set it as per the manual for this one. Okay, so now walking out. I keep getting the feeling like my button is sticking. You guys ever get that feeling where it's like you feel like you gotta release it? I don't know why it's feeling that way lately. I hope it doesn't turn into a problem. I'll report if it does. All right, so then mixing, we have to build a mix for our panic switch. Now you wouldn't have to do this, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it because it's in the manual. So normal, and we're gonna mix eye to gear. So inhibit, 
This one you have to scroll in. Okay, now, good luck getting to switch I if you're panicking. We want that to control gear with a rate of zero and minus 125, which you'll notice that when I hit that, it's gonna make the gyro go up like crazy to the top extremity. See, oh wait, makes gear go up to the top extremity. Okay, and then we need the offset to be 100. So that puts it to the max. And we want that when switch I, whoops, when switch I is true. So nothing happens and then it happens. Nothing happens and then it happens. Nothing happens and then it happens. You can see this little black bar that's underneath that indicates the condition of the switch, okay? So we have no mix or we have this mix applied, but only when the I switch is pressed. Now that's not withstanding the bind mode. The bind mode is controlled at a different parameter of the firmware, okay? So during normal flight mode, that mix will be called out, but the switch still acts as the I switch, which is gonna be calling out the bind mode if you power while holding it, okay? Um, all right, so that's the regular settings. I don't think we need to switch any of these because these are all normal and they're all 100, 100, okay, for all the auxiliaries, okay? So the frame rate we need to change. So let's click and I uh, struggle to remember where this is. I think it's under bind. Start trainer system setup. Disconnect RF, okay. Um, where is that? Yeah, Frame good. rate, there it is. So we're gonna set that to hybrid. Okay. Well, that's kind of cool. I've never gone to that screen before. No. I wonder if that means I could identify what my NX8 was bound to a model. And then like if I wanted to switch to the NX10 without actually going through the bind procedure, I wonder if that would work. It's hmm. so like if it said 167 on this one, if that said like 132, then I wonder if I could type 132 and it would just then be bound. Change it. Hmm. Might be worth a try. I had to do that to a plane the other day because I was using my NX10 to fly a plane that had previously been bound to my NX8. And so I had, to, I had glued in all the connectors. So I was able to pull the entire lot of them at once. This happened to be a Lemon RX setup. And then I plugged in a bind plug and I grabbed my XBC battery checker and a male to male, well, female to female connector and plugged in just like the aileron channel to energize it. And then I bound, put everything back together and it was fine. But sometimes it's really impractical to get to the bind plug. And that's what's so nice about some of the modern stuff because we just have these push buttons now. So this little push button makes it so much easier. That being said on helis, it's also kind of sometimes can be really difficult to get to the bind buttons. Um, in this one, it's not. All right, so guys, that's like literally it uh, for setup. Set up the timer. Oh yeah, we do need to set up the timer as per the instructions. So we'll do that real quick. Okay, so let's do, and we're gonna go over all this to make sure it's right. So let's do timer, five minutes. They want the one out off because really in a helicopter, it's different than an airplane because like you're either giving throttle or you're not. But it's, I mean, you, I, we might be on the ground a lot because we're doing testing and setup. And they have over 5%, which is crazy. What? Do they? Yeah, there says over five instead of 25, which is default. Oh, really? Okay, well, that's fine. Thank you for catching that. I didn't notice that. There's a lot of information on the helis. <clears throat> okay, we have a voice and vibrate at one minute. Nothing at 20 seconds. And then I want to... Uh, voice countdown, expiration tone, and vibrate with a tone every minute thereafter. Okay. All right, guys. So that's everything. Timer's cleared. You hear that? Why is it starting the timer? I'm not at 5%. See? Look, I'm at 1%. Hmm. Oh, 
I want to go to timer and see if that took. You know, I've noticed this before. Sometimes the timer is like really dumb the first time you run a model. I'm going to shut this off and see what happens. I bet after we turn it back on, it'll be fine. Our throttle hold is on, by the way, so it shouldn't warn us. Ha! Started counting already. I'm gonna just set it to 10. You see, it's still counting down. That is so weird. Now I wanna figure out what's going on. So it says one out. So let's just turn that on and see what happens. Clear the timer. Why is it starting? Is the stick not at zero? It says zero. Oh, wait, my throttle holds on. If I move this stick, if I go to monitor, there's 30 and there's 94. What the heck is going on there? You see that? Yeah. What the heck is going on there? That is very weird. Now I need to figure out what the heck is going on here because that is not normal, is it? Oh, it's my flight modes. So you see how it's locked at 60 and it's at 100? That isn't what we set. But that's so. That isn't what we set. No. Well, no, that might be the absolute value though. Because minus 100 compared to plus 30. Let's go to the throttle curve. Where is throttle curve? See, there's 60, 65. So 65 on top of 100. So this would be plus 100. So that'd be 65. So if you go to 65% of the percentage, you would take half of that away. So it'd be, yeah, so you're only talking 15% over that throw. So that's where you're getting your weird number. But if you go to stunt one, see on stunt one, PIT, there's your PIT. There's your actual pitch, mm -hmm. okay? And then your throttle is gonna also be set so that is weird. Why would they set the throttle to run over five then? It is a countdown. Active. Over 5%. Throttle out. Throttle stick. And throttle out. Oh, so that's different. Throttle out is throttle stick. See throttle stick? Where's throttle out? I'm just wondering if we've done something wrong. Throttle stick. There's throttle out over 5% with that inhibited, okay? That's good. That all looks good. That all looks fine. Huh. All right, I'm gonna play with this and come right back. All right guys, so I don't know what the heck is going on, but I'm gonna just say this. This is what I did to my timer. I went to timer, throttle out by default, over 25% with one out active. Okay, now watch what happens. With hold on, nothing. That's what you want. With hold off, it starts and then it runs and it keeps running, okay? Now, if you're set to 5% for whatever reason, it's like the threshold is too small, okay? So we'll just try it again. So we're gonna clear the timer. You hear the noise, did it? Okay, with hold on, even then it starts. So I just think it's too close. Um, for the threshold. So let's try 10. And if you're wondering if I went in and calibrated my sticks, I did just to make sure that wasn't it. Let's go to 15. See, and you hear that weird. So 
Now, if I go back to timer, we're just gonna learn something together, guys. So if I go to 25, now it's fine. As soon as you unlock and you start, then it starts counting down. And then it keeps counting down. But you could also just go into your timer and you could say one out, inhibit. Okay, now holds on, timer's cleared. Nothing happens. It starts counting, you're flying, everything's fine. It stops counting. But you wanna know why? I just figured it out. It's because it's absolute position of throttle, not the position of your stick, okay? So if you go to monitor mode, you can see the throttle's weird because we're in, with throttle hold off, we're in normal mode, okay? So normal goes from zero, then at 25%, it's at 65, and then it doesn't go any higher no matter what you do with this stick because that also controls the pitch, okay? So at the bottom of the stick, you see how quick we reach 5%? It's instantaneous, mm -hmm. okay? That's why 25 is harder to reach because you see that 25 is down here. So if you're minus 94 for the absolute stick bottom position, then there's your timer starting and so on and so forth. So 25 to me is fine. You're still gonna get the same function. Now in idle up, it's gonna start the timer right away and stunt one or stunt two, you're gonna be started right away, okay? And I can prove that to you here by clearing the timer and I'm out of my normal mode. I am not even gonna move the stick and watch what happens. One. Starts counting, okay? So does that make sense, guys? Okay. Part of the reason we force you to go through this learning process with us is because we don't get stumped very often but when we do, it frustrates me. And I wanna know what we did wrong and why it didn't work. Now, I'm gonna tell you this. I think that's probably a typo in the manual because that 5% is way too sensitive. I mean, you're gonna just like barely ever not have it counting, okay? You'd have to have your stick all the way down and even with hold, it's still, it's still calling it out. Okay, and that's because in my case, even though I just calibrated my sticks off camera, I calibrated my sticks in system setup, um, you'll look in monitor mode with me and on hold it's minus 100, but it's still starting, okay? So no matter what my flight mode, as soon as I come out of it, I have a 7% differential, mm. okay? So if I wanted this, if I wanted this at 10, I could hypothetically do that, okay? Throttle holds on, clear the timer. Nope, it's gonna keep doing it. It's still gonna do it though. So I don't understand what the deal is, but I can definitely say this. You have to remember in terms of the percentages zero through minus 100 and zero through plus 100 in spectrum world. So this 10% speaks to the overall percentage basis of the stick position, I believe, okay? So anyway, I'm just gonna set it to 25, I don't care. That's enough thought for all of this ever for the rest of our lives. All right, so now that we've answered questions you didn't have and I didn't have, we'll go ahead and get ready for the next part of the setup. So the next part of the radio setup is gonna be testing what we've done to make sure that things are kind of going in the right directions. Now this is where you're gonna wanna be careful because even with this thing disconnected, you still have another prop. I'm not taking off the tail rotor. So if you guys are too worried, you can cover your eyes for a minute and make sure I don't get cut. Throttle hold is on, and I'm gonna be prepared to go into bind mode, but I don't have to be in there initially, okay? Because it's just gonna force myself into bind mode, and I apologize, the sun is kind of shining through on here, so hopefully you can see good enough to see what you need to see. Okay, so we're gonna let this initiate. Okay, so I'm gonna press the bind button. All right, so you can see the flashy lights. Now I'm gonna click, camera crew is gonna come around. I don't know why she went around in the first place, but we're gonna go to bind. Okay, here's bind. Okay. All right, so it's bound. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna look at the direction of correction. First things first, I'm going to secure this helicopter and I'm gonna go ahead and shut off throttle hold in normal mode with my stick down and in normal mode. Nothing happens, that's what we wanna see. Okay, now if I were to do that in, in idle up, 
also known as stunt one or stunt two, then it would start spinning this and it would start spinning that and it'd be at a pretty good pace. So you wanna be super careful about that. So my throttle hold is on and I'll be able to simulate forward pitch, backward pitch. So I'm gonna just put this this way so you can kind of see when I go forward with the cyclic, it goes forward. When I go back with the cyclic, it goes back. When I go uh, right, it, it rolls right. When I go left, it rolls left. Now when I yaw, you're not gonna be able to see the actual change in speed, but you'll be able to see this, okay? I can turn those. See, that pulls me left, that pulls me right. So that's gonna push me nose left, that's gonna push me nose right, okay? So this would go like that, and this would go like that. See how you just turn those blades, or you can just turn one of them, okay? So we turn the top blade, that tells you it's gonna push you that way, and then it's gonna push you that way. So it's just like in an airplane, you want it to be kind of like a rudder, okay? You see how that works, guys? See the rudder? Now you can also test your AS3X, okay? So there's your AS3X, it's gonna correct by going, the, uh, it looks like it's correcting the wrong direction. Or did I mistake something here? See, when I push this way, it should go that way. Wait. That is pushing that way. That is pushing this way. Now, I wanna verify, double verify. That actually is going backward, isn't it? Come look behind me, please. So when I move the stick this way, that's actually gonna purchase the air and pull the tail that way, which makes the nose go that way. Then when I push this way, it's gonna make the nose go that way. Does that seem right to you? I don't know. Okay. So then elevator up, elevator down. It's not an elevator, it's a cyclic, okay? Now I have my throttle hold on so I can move the collective up. Everything goes up, everything goes down for the pitch. And you can see right here, everything goes up, everything goes down. So the whole thing is flat, the whole thing is flat. Okay, so we have movement in the right directions. Now, one thing we have to do, they didn't talk about it at all on the menu, but did they talk anything about forward programming? Advanced tuning, forward programming. So we have to, we have to set up safe select, don't we? Okay, so I'm gonna click here and go down to forward programming. There's safe, okay? Stability. So now it says off. I'm gonna turn it on. But you see how it's not changing the flight mode? Setup, flight mode channel is not gear, is it? Isn't it? It was like two different things. Yeah, wasn't it flight mode? It's a gear in one spot and aux two in one spot. Oh, okay. So let's go back to let's go back to safe stability. See, it's not changing the modes. That's where I came from. I don't want to do that. It's wash plate. That's all set. I don't want to mess with that. Tail rotor. I don't want to mess with that. Okay. Oh, you know what else? It's because we're locked because we have the hold on. Okay, so I'm gonna go to safe. Now I'm in safe, so I'm gonna still secure the helicopter and I'm gonna shut off my throttle hold. When I go to stability, watch this. Stunt one, stunt two. See how this pitch goes down? So there's your pitch up, pitch down. Pitch up, pitch down, and then normal. It doesn't pitch down as much, okay? But I'm still concerned, my throttle holds on. I don't understand why it's not actually 
allow me to get that going. Attitude trim. I don't think we need any attitude trim. Stability. Definitely on here. So let's go ahead and, and just see if it does it. Yep, it's trying to auto level because you can tell the swash plate stays level. Okay, so you see that? It's trying to right the aircraft. Okay, so my concern is, how do I make that so it's, it's only on in the certain mode? System setup, that's not where it is. All right, so we're gonna pause and figure this out. All right, so guys, going back into my regular mode, I just wanna talk about something. This, this brought to my attention something very important, okay? See how that says hold? I'm in normal. See, that's, that's what I'm talking about. The stick was up just a little bit. You gotta be super careful with helis, okay? So it's normal. So it's switching modes, but check this out, okay? When I go down to forward programming, and I go to safe or to setup, and then I say which channel, it says gear, okay? I don't have a gain channel set and then output channel six, I don't even know what that does. But I could set the gain channel to auxiliary two to my knob if I wanted, but I'm not gonna necessarily do that, okay? But what I do wanna have is I wanna make sure that this switches on and off, because I only want safe on in my normal mode. I don't want it in stunt one, stunt two, that'd be stupid. Um, because then you can't flip it over, okay? So under stability, you can see how it doesn't change modes. Now I'm in forward programming, so I should be safe to undo this. It's not changing the mode. If it doesn't change here, it means that the radio system is not aware of what's coming from here to there. Okay, so I use those tools to learn that. Throttle holds on, normal mode, stick is down. We're gonna just double check that again, triple check that, okay? All right, now I'm gonna scroll all the way down to system setup, disconnect RF, and I'm gonna go down to channel assigned. You guys remember when we did this earlier? Look, why is that not set? That should be gear, correct? Mm -hmm. For should flight mode. So look, F mode. Now watch this. See how it says hold, throttle holds on, nothing changes, good. Now I'm gonna go into forward programming and you should see a change. So I'm gonna set up and then gear. See it's already on gear. So now I can go to safe and I can go to stability. See how it says hold now? When holds off, it goes to normal. Then it goes to flight mode one and flight mode two. Connection failed, throttle holds on. You wanna be careful about that because if the connection fails, it won't hypothetically let you out if you're not back in throttle hold, okay? If the connection fails, just go back in. It's not a big deal. Just make sure you put your throttle hold back on, okay? So I'm gonna go back into safe, stability, and guess what? I want stability, I want safe on in hold. Yes. Then when I'm in normal mode, I want it off. Stunt two, I want off. But in normal, I want it on. So now it's off and it's off. Does that make sense, folks? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> but it, now it says off. So the connection failed, throttle holds back on. Okay, so we're gonna click menu, go back into forward programming. If that happens, don't worry, it's not a big deal. That's all correct. Now I wanna see, okay, so stability's on in hold mode and it's on in normal mode, but not stunt one or stunt two, okay? okay? Very basic setup, throttle holds on, sticks are down. That is a super critical thing that you have to get right. I don't know how I didn't get it right the first time, but evidently I didn't get it right. I don't know if I backed out at the wrong time or if I accidentally scrolled off of gear flight mode because I remember we were looking at this list, I physically remember doing it, but that doesn't mean I did it right. So evidently I didn't do it right. The good news is now we should withhold on, this thing should be an auto level. And as you can see, the swash is trying to automatically level the aircraft. It's really easy to see on a helicopter, okay? It's trying to level the aircraft. 
Okay, we're gonna also go through one other test. Okay, now, just to be careful, my stick is down. I'm gonna go to normal mode. Okay, I'm in normal mode. This would spin up if I gave throttle. It's also in auto level, okay? Now, if I were to turn it to idle, to idle up or stunt mode one or stunt mode two, it would start spinning that at really fast rate. So I can't really safely test that, so I'm not gonna test that, okay? We'll just have to start with safe on for normal mode and then safe off everything else. Now, I also wanna test my panic mode, okay? So I'm in hold. See how it goes up like that? See how it goes up like that? That tells you that there is at least a change in state, okay? So it's going to more precisely hold the position as desired by the control system when you press the I button. I don't generally get to the I button in time when I have a conflict I usually just get to normal mode because that's the quickest for me to get to. All right, that being said, now we need to verify the tail is going in the right direction, okay? So let's look at this. The manual does give a little description of this. I'm in hold mode still, which is gonna be the same app applicationally as normal mode, but it just won't accidentally spin up if I bump my throttle stick, which is also the collective. Move the rudder stick to the right. The pitch slider on the tail shaft should move toward the tail case, okay? So when I move this, ooh, look at that. That does not look like it's moving toward the case. It does not. Okay. I'm gonna read this section. Okay, dyslexic moment, moment guys, I want you to see them simultaneously. When I move this, it should go there, okay, toward toward this boom. When I move it to the right, it should go toward the right. That's gonna basically turn this into a fan that's blowing that way, which is gonna point the nose of the helicopter that way. When I go the other way, it's gonna move the helicopter that way, okay? Now, the correction should be opposite of that, okay? So, when I push this way, then you should see that go that direction. You should see it want to blow air that way. It's blowing air that way to resist. Now same, I'm gonna to try to neutralize the helicopter. I'll just kind of give it a move the sticks. Now when I push it this way, it should turn this into a fan to resist that output or environmental impact. Yep, so it's turning the fan, so it's blowing this way. So everything is working right. I was super second guessing myself on that and I normally don't, but when the camera crew and I couldn't come to terms on that, I was like, okay, hold on. I need to stop, I need to think this through, and then just get it right. So as you know, here on Brian Phillips RC, we try to help beginners get from sitting on the couch to flying in the air safely. And in order to do that, sometimes that means being a little bit vulnerable when we question ourselves and second guess ourselves. That can make for a longer video, and my apologies for that. But I'm just a dude that is not an expert heli guy, and I wanna to try to get better. And the way you get better is by making less mistakes and applying the things you've learned from every other time you've made mistakes and then building on that. And eventually you make less mistakes and eventually you become a better pilot. Now, some of that comes with skill and muscle memory that is not so much like you know mistakes per se, it's more of just like you need practice, okay? But what I'm talking about is in terms of radio setup, if your radio setup's not right, you are going to fail. Guaranteed, there is no middle ground. You will fail, you will crash, and you will be upset. Okay, I'm glad we talked about that. Now, admittedly, I gotta say guys, helicopters, I am extra crucially careful as best I can. I try my very, very, very best to give you guys good advice because I know that inherently I am inclined to making more mistakes because I'm less well-versed in helis. So if you see me spinning my wheels a little bit and kind of beating a dead horse a little bit, forgive me. I would rather beat a dead horse for a few minutes and make sure you guys save your helicopters. So this is a Fusion 360 Smart Helicopter. That is the radio setup. Now, I would love to spin it up for you, but I just don't trust myself to do it inside of here. Uh, with helicopters of this size, it's obviously too big for my skills. I mean, I'm sure that like I could actually physically fly it in here, but I'm not gonna do that because I'm not crazy. And that would do some serious damage to the cabinetry and walls. I know from experience because back in the day I had a helicopter that was probably a little bit smaller than this and I did fly it into some cabinets because that was back before I knew any better. 
and now I'm older and wiser and I make less stupid mistakes and now I just make, well. Well, you're older now. I make, I'm older, that's right. So anyway, guys, that is the radio setup. This thing is ready to fly in my opinion. Again, there might be some adjustments here and there, but this thing is ready to take to the skies. I might wanna put the props on or rather the rotors. And by the way, did you guys get a look at this? That beautiful carbon fiber finish. I love that on these helis. So gorgeous, that holographic look to it. Just gotta love it. And yes, there is some lube on here and that's a good thing. So you wanna make sure that lube stays. Now, the other thing too is, there's two things I wanna bring to your attention. When you have a helicopter and you're less well-versed like me, and you're watching a video like this and you find yourself like in a, in a, in a point where you're like, you know, I'm just not sure. I'm not sure it's right. There will be an edge where you have to jump and take the leap of faith. Just remember that when you take the leap of faith, if you're too uh, eager to take the leap of faith, you may be just committing Harry Carey, okay? So just be careful um, with your helicopter, specifically, not yourself, but when you get to the edge, just double check, triple check, and then go ahead and jump and hopefully you've got everything set and you're gonna be fine. Now, that doesn't mean that something can't also go wrong, okay? Things do go wrong and it just sucks when it does, but with helicopters, it tends to be somewhat catastrophic no matter what. Doesn't mean you're gonna get hurt, it just means that the helicopter itself generally hurts itself when it crashes because there's so many fast moving parts. It's not like you can glide this in if you tip over on takeoff, yeah. you're gonna be screwed. It's gonna break stuff, okay? You're gonna have linkages that are flying everywhere. And my suggestion is, if you can get somebody to help you, it really does kind of help to have a video the first couple of times you fly a heli because you can go back and review the scenario if something doesn't quite go right. So that's one suggestion I can give you. And we obviously have the benefit of that because we film so much of what we do here on Brian Phillips RC. I'm gonna try to stay out of the sun there. Um, but I must say that that was a really easy setup. Uh, the only problem we had was that the gear channel for whatever reason decided it was not going to continue to be selecting. Um, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to power down everything uh, as I would normally power down an airplane or a helicopter. And then I'm gonna learn to trust this device right now. So I'm gonna also power down my transmitter, okay? Okay, so once everything is turned off, I'm gonna go through a normal startup procedure before I put anything on here and I'm gonna decide if I can trust this aircraft. Okay, so powering up. Okay, comes up, we're in throttle hold and we're normal with the, with the throttle stick all the way down. Okay, timer is cleared. Then I'm gonna plug in my battery. I'm gonna look and see if anything is weird. Listening hear the obnoxious frequency of digital servos. Okay, now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up the helicopter and I'm gonna look for auto leveling. I am in hold mode. It's gonna be the same in, new, in normal or hold. It is auto leveling. It is auto leveling. Also, then the second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for correction on the tail. If I push this, does it create a fan effect? Yes, it does. Now, if I push it the other way, does it? Yes, it does. Okay, now I'm gonna move that is going to point my nose that way. That's gonna point my nose the other way. Okay, so everything that I can test, forward, backward, right, and left. Everything that I can test, let's give them a shot of this. So right here, imagine this is that. That is the same as that, is that, as that, okay? Now I'm in throttle hold, I'm in normal, I am going to also, just as a precautionary measure, hold this, it should not move. And the collective moves the pitch up and the pitch down. The pitch goes up and the pitch goes past zero and the pitch is at approximately zero here at the middle of the sticks and then all the way down. So we have tested everything that can be tested without spinning it up and then seeing what really happens. If you found this tutorial at even remotely helpful, please smash the like button. Long format videos get crushed on YouTube. 
uh, and not in a good way because they want to do short videos that are really just a waste of time. And we're here to help you guys get in the air and really do something with your own time. So even though this is a long video, we know that there's people out there who want to be, they want their hand held and I'm gonna help hold your hand because I kind of need that right now as I am still learning the heli stuff. Now, step by step as best we can. I'm gonna get better and better as we do more and more. And this will be, I don't know, in terms of collective pitch helicopters, what is this, like the 10th one we've done maybe? Yeah, We've done a few that are ready to fly, so we don't really have to set anything up. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't really require any skills uh, on the radio. And to be honest with you, this one doesn't require much skill. We just recently did the M4. Of course, that was a uh, really complicated thing. And to be honest, it's a bigger hel helicopter, considerably more expensive helicopter, and you have to buy... Uh, your own receiver or flight controller. And we've had a couple of different people recommend different flight controllers that seem really complicated. But this one here, um, this is what we used and it came with the receiver, the, the receiver, the satellite receiver. So in this package, you open up the box, you go through that short radio setup. You could probably actually go out and download a default configuration. But I'm gonna tell you one thing, guys. If you take anything away from a video with Brian Phillips RC, other than the fact that, good Lord, that was long. We want you to take this. Go through the radio setup. Learn what type of problems to expect. Figure out why the stupid timer doesn't start. Learn why that it didn't work the way you expected it to work. Learn to learn why it didn't work. Because the reason it's good to know why it didn't work is because someday you're gonna be trying to fix something that really matters and then you'll be able to intuitively use those same steps to break that circuit to a point where you can fix it. Okay, this is a skill for life. It's not just a skill for RC helicopters. And yes, at the end of the day, I am learning every time I do one of these helicopters a little bit more. And I'm also getting more confident in the abilities that I have reinforced, okay? Also, I wanna say, setting this up from scratch is a lot more complicated than setting it up in a bind and fly, yeah. okay? This was very easy compared to that. And this is still considerably harder than, you know, setting up this, this J11 or setting up that P51 or that Carbon Z T28 or setting up, you know, the Ultra Stick, even with flap rons. So there are a lot of things that you can learn by going through the radio setup videos on Brian Phillips RC. And we hope that you guys see and get the value out of those things. And so definitely, like I said earlier, smash the like button, click the bell for subscription um, notifications when you do subscribe because we want you guys to get this content as it pushes out on a routine basis. We do tons of videos. What have we done, like 80 videos this year so far? 72. Yeah, 72, something like that. It's a lot of videos and our videos are not five minute videos here, folks. I mean, some, every once in a very, very long time you might get a five minute video, but that is like dessert for Brian Phillips RC fans. Uh, because the main course is usually a long video that goes very in detail um, on what's wh what I crashed into and why I made a mistake to do that or how to avoid crashing sometimes, um, usually the minority of the cases. But at the end of the day, we really want to teach you to do it. And so for that reason, in return, we are going to ask you when you do buy this helicopter, the Fusion 360 Smart, buy it from the links in the video description below and you will help support us financially. That's how we pay to run this channel. It is not without little sacrifice. We love this stuff, or at least I do. My camera crew, not so much, but she tolerates it and she tolerates me. But the thing is, this stuff is super fun. But at the end of the day, you guys got to understand, we've done this hundreds of times, thousands of times, in fact, and we really want to help perpetuate a skill that is not easy, that is not cheap, that is not simple, that is not easy. And you wanna know how hard that is to do right now in today's day and age? Everything is app this, app that, five minute interest level, and then move on. This takes years to get good at, and we want you guys to get good at it as soon as possible, because we know that you're missing out on a huge life experience if you don't do it. So if you guys are just watching and thinking, God, but I can never do that, Brian, trust me, Everybody thinks that when they're brand new, unless you're completely an egomaniac. And if you are an egomaniac, please follow my links as you buy many, many helicopters and then immediately crash them and quit. We also wanna prevent the egomaniacs from crashing too. 
Because at the end of the day, one and dones are one of the big things we wanna prevent on this channel. People that buy this helicopter instead of something easy, okay? Instead of a 230S, a 230S would be even easier to set up, although it's not that big, big of a difference to be honest. <laughs> so truthfully guys, we've got tons of different help out there for you right now. You don't have to wait for it to release. It is literally available right now and if you wanna support us, but you just can't buy the stuff from the links, whether it's a helicopter, an airplane, a battery, a transmitter, or whatever charger that you need, which by the way, let's talk about chargers real quick. We use the 2200, the S2200 AC charger. We also have these DC ones, but I would highly recommend if you're plugging in at home, use this one, it's the one you want. Don't mess around, don't get the single 200 watt, that's a waste of time, get this. Don't get the single 400 watt, that's a waste of time, just get this one. Also, if you don't wanna spend this kind of cash for this helicopter, you can easily get the S-155 considerably cheaper, like to the tune of a quarter of the price. But remember guys, you're charging like four times faster because you have 200 watts versus about 55 watts per channel, and you can do two batteries simultaneously. Smart batteries are not a gimmick. I used to think they were, and I talked a lot about it when they first came out. I have found that they are amazing God sense from heaven because I have a lot of batteries and people are like, well, well it's a big fire hazard you got. Yeah. No kidding. That's why we have fire extinguishers all around our house. But that being said, the truth is I want my batteries automatically discharged. I don't wanna to have to think about it. I don't have time for it. I can't keep up with 70 batteries. I can't keep up with a thousand batteries. Okay, and we're probably closer to a thousand than we are to 70. So if you're anything like me and you don't have time and brain power to waste on, did I discharge that battery? And you've got like 400 other things on your list of things to worry about, get smart batteries. Spend the extra premium, and yes, make no mistake, they are more expensive, but you're getting better technology, you're getting better outcome, you're getting the best chance at outcome. That doesn't mean there's never a bad battery, it doesn't mean you're never gonna have a problem, it doesn't mean you're, you're not gonna destroy the battery when you crash. Those things are still gonna happen, but you're gonna have a better chance at success, and you're gonna have a better margin of safety, and you're gonna have a better experience and you're probably gonna get a little bit more life cycles out of them because they're gonna work better because they automatically balance as you use them. Okay, so that's part of the reason why we love these batteries. When I first started getting them, I said, this is such a gimmick. And then I, I immediately fell in love with them because I immediately started seeing every other battery I have dead after two or three seasons. And that was using them four or five times a year. You know, some of these batteries you don't use all the time. So the thing is you get a better crack at success with the smart batteries. You're, not, you're chasing good money after bad if you're buying non-smart, unless you are very disciplined in using the battery after it's been charged and then leaving it at storage value, storage like 3.8 or 3.9 or somewhere in that range per cell. And then as soon as you're ready to go fly, you charge them right before you fly. That's the only thing I'd say. That also means that you need to warm up your batteries if you're going to a cold flying field because battery lipo technology needs to be a little bit warmer. You don't wanna go out there and charge them at minus 32 degrees. So anyway, lots to consider. The short answer is get the smart technology, you'll enjoy it. Also, you're gonna have telemetry data, which is definitely worthwhile. And that is one of the biggest features of these helicopters that have smart ESCs, okay? Same thing in smart ESC equipped airplanes, except we get the addition of thrust reverse. So it's really nice, because then you can slow your planes down even quicker than normal with flaps and a normal uh, proper approach. So anyway, guys, hopefully we've answered lots of your questions. We appreciate you. If you can't buy the things from the links, what I was gonna say is we have new YouTube memberships available right now. You can join today, right now if you want. You can join James, I think he's our first, and then you can do super thanks. If you don't wanna buy the helicopter or the airplane or whatever it is, cause you're afraid your wife is gonna leave you, just remember, tell her there's snakes in the basement, UPS guy comes to the back door. That's the easiest way, usually works, depends on if your wife likes snakes or not. If she likes snakes, you're gonna to have to come up with something else like spiders or gremlins or, you know, I don't know, monsters. Um, you know, you could tell her there's a giant radio controlled airplane down there, don't go down there. But whatever you gotta use, we're here to back you up. And what we want you to do is buy these things and live them and enjoy them. But if you can't do that, we also have PayPal and Patreon as well. Uh, just remember if you do PayPal, we're friends and family, aren't we? Yeah, yep. who wants to give them fees for no reason? So friends and family, if you do it. Otherwise, we really appreciate you and we still think by far, 
the best way to help support Brian Phillips RC is to just buy the stuff through the links and then you don't pay any extra and it helps us to build relationships with the companies that, that send us stuff so that we can keep reviewing, okay? So it is a win, win, win. The three-way win, that's what we're always looking for here on Brian Phillips RC, is we want you guys to win when the manufacturers make good stuff and we want them to lose when they make bad stuff and we will direct you to something that's good. That's what we try to do on this channel by giving you guys no BS. We don't do the fastest, greenest, bestest, cheapest. That's garbage, that's a waste of your time. What you wanna know is whether or not the thing does what it says it's gonna do. And what it says it's gonna do should be a skill level three, which kind of scares me, helicopter that's gonna be 3D capable and is gonna be able to do far more than Brian Phillips RC can handle. But hopefully you guys are a little bit better at 3D when you buy this heli. All right, guys, that's all you get. Hopefully you've seen the Maidens by now, but if not, this is the Unbox Build Radio setup. And if you're like, where's the Maiden? It's another flight. Uh, we actually separate the Maiden from the Unbox Build Radio setup in certain circumstances. Not sure on this one, depends on how long the video is. But if you're looking for it, it usually publishes one minute before the actual Unbox Build Radio setup will actually be available for those that wanna watch in chronological order. So if you're looking for this, it's like one minute later. So it's already available. Stay tuned guys, so much more. Oh, and then also check out brianphillipsrc.com if you wanna sort through the plethora of other helicopters, quads, airplanes, sailplanes, you know, float planes, jets, EDF, uh, commercial airliners, all that stuff. We have that all sorted by type and by brand so that you can find the video you're looking for. And believe me, there is a lot out there, literally thousands of videos, and we're here to help you right now. So stay tuned on Brian Phillips RC.